So this module is about uh, 60 gigahertz millimeter wave. We have two logos here, Y gig and Y HD. We'll talk about those two. And then there's a picture of people doing very high speed transmission to their TV, playing some games at very high speed. That's what you get. And um, so 60 gigahertz frequency allocation, 60 gigahertz standards. And then we will talk about two of these standards. 11AD and wireless HD. And then I want to take you through a trip through this OFDM parameters simply because I want you to understand how to read them, how to read, you know, the, these parameters because when we go to LTE and other things, similar things appear. So 60 gigahertz frequency allocation. So if you remember the spectrum, Um, you know, from 30 cycles to whatever, right? There is 60 gigahertz frame. So in North America, FCC gave 57 to 64. 57 to 64. And Korea gave the same thing. In Japan, they gave 59 to 66. And in EU, they gave from 57 to 66. Why different countries give different? Because these are all new allocations. They might have given these previously for some military thing, you know, which they cannot get rid of very fast. Or even for academy, not military, civilian things even. So there's some important use so in different countries. So these are all new allocations. 60 gigahertz. They call 60 gigahertz because it is close to 60. Right? So if you want to make a worldwide <coughs> equipment, you really have, you are limited to 59 to 64. Right? And that gives you about 5 gigahertz in my calculation. But somehow it says you get 4 channels of 2 gigahertz. Um, 59, 60, 4 channels up to each. Okay, anyway, I don't know how. But anyway, so the idea is previously each channel was 20 megahertz, actually 5 megahertz. Remember, the channel was, numbering was 5 megahertz, and then you went, you know, combined 4 of them to make 20, and now we are combining 4 of them to make 80, and then 8 of them to make 160. Similarly, we start with 2 gigahertz. And um, and 2 gigahertz, obviously, if you do the dumbest thing, which is GPSK, 1 bit per hertz or half bit per whatever, you know, very simple thing, you get a lot of gigabits. You don't have to work very hard to get gigabits out of gigahertz. Right? So that's what that means. And by the way, it is called millimeter because the wavelength is millimeter. Okay, so let's see, see the wavelength. So if you are at 300 megahertz, if I 30 megahertz, the wavelength is 10 meter. And if you are at 3 mega, 3 gigahertz, so 2.4 is right there, just below it. The, the wavelength is 10 centimeter at 3. Here it was 12 centimeter. Remember in one of the exercises we calculated for 2.4 gigahertz, it was 12.5 centimeter which is 1.25 decimeters, you know, whatever, right? So that was a decimeter wave. And um, 5.8 of this centimeter wave, and anything more than 30 and less than 300 is millimeter. Make sense? Okay. 30 gigahertz is, is 10 millimeter. And 300 gigahertz is one millimeter. All right. If 300 is one, how much is 60 gigahertz? Is this the ratio? So what is the ratio of 60 and 300? Five. Right. So five millimeters. Right? 
and the multiplication of the wavelength to the frequency is equal to the speed of light. So you multiply pi by 60, you get 300 meters per microsecond, which is the speed of light. So that's another way. But anyway, 5 millimeter wave we are going to use, right? This is what I call the millimeter wave transmission. Now the advantage of 5 millimeter, you know how much is 5 millimeter? This much. You know how long in dinner you need? Half of that. Half wavelength antenna. Separation between the antennas, you know, half wavelength. You know, it's, it's very good <laughs> if you want to make a tiny thing. All right. So, FCC put some limits. And the limits are indicated here on this slide. They put a limit on EIRP. EIRP stands for equivalent isotropically radiated power. So they say, they don't, basically what they're saying is that we stand someplace and we find out how much power you are getting. Okay? And then we assume that you are sending that power everywhere. You're not sending everywhere because, of course, you, you will need a lot of battery. But we assume that you're going to send it everywhere, so how much power you would need to send so that I get that much, that is a limited. That is the limit on the EIRP. So, U.S. Canada said that you cannot have in more than 27 dBm and EIRP of 43 dBm. Okay, you need to have both the limits. You have to obey both the limits. Right? That means that suppose the, uh, uh, suppose you have antenna with a 10 dB, if suppose you have um, an antenna with a 30 dBi, uh, this is the dBi, don't forget that dBi, we, we, we actually defined it, dBi was decibel isotropic. Okay, that was the antenna gain. Antenna gain is always measured in dBi. We talk about dBm and dB, and dBi is isotropic. It's just same thing as dB, but it just applies to antenna. So, um, so if you have a, um, you transmit 30 dB m, you transmit 30 dB m, but you have an antenna which has a gain of 33 dB i. 33 dBi antenna, right, a real big antenna, and you are transmitting only 10 dB and that is 43. Because it will look like this. Most of it is going in one direction. If you, if you would have transmitted 43 dB M and it was going in all the direction and your antenna was just a straight forward 0 dB I, then you will get that power, right? So 43 means that your antenna gain plus transmitted power should be less than 43. And your transmitted power should be less than 27 dBm. I mean, so generally, I mean, basically depends upon, if you transmit 27 dBm, then how much gain can you have in the antenna? Sixteen dBi, right? And that is kind of minimum. If you have anything less than that, you're not using your full allocation. You can still do that. The government will not complain that you're not using. But that is kind of, you know, becomes a normal. Everybody will have 16 dBi antenna. And um, and then hopefully they can promise 27, maybe not. Japan put the limit at um, 58. Korea put the limit at 27, which is very low, and so on. If you want to see about this, this is a book that is very good and explains all this. So you understand the rules, right? These are all FCC rules, and um, and as usual, most of these things start from the United States. They make the rules, and then the other countries follow, and they try to make as good as possible, but they cannot achieve sometimes. 
So now because the antennas are so small, you can put lots of them on a chip. Okay. So first of all, what is the advantage of 60 gigahertz? First is that the spectrum is large. You have such a by 7 gigahertz band in the United District, 7 gigahertz. So with a lot of band, you can give a lot of things to everybody. And if you want to do 7 gigabits, all you need is very simple GPSK, 1 bit per head. And if you do, I mean, you don't need all this complex, complex stuff. A small antenna separation, 5 millimeter wavelength, and then um, so 5 by 4, lambda by 4 is the separation. I should put a lambda here. I think lambda is missing. Lambda by 4 is 1.25 millimeters. You can put lots of antennas on a chip. Easy beam farming. Because you have the antenna arrays, now you know, with antenna arrays, what they do is they change the phases behind the scene and the antenna, without physically rotating the antenna, the beam rotates. Low interference. Does not cross walls. And because it is such a high speed, it cannot go through the walls. The lower speed can find paths. Lower, they have, uh, sorry, lower frequencies. This is very high frequency, so if you are using here, <coughs> these people will not be affected over here. Okay, it doesn't go very far. I mean, negative is that it doesn't go very far, but the positive is that there is no interference. Okay? They're not cross walls and good for urban neighbors. Directional antennas, and because it is almost like getting towards the light, it becomes a straight line. <coughs> um, and inherent security, and because it doesn't go very far, you know, people cannot listen to you. I mean, you, I mean, like I just was hearing on the news the other day that in the White House they're not allowed to use Wi-Fi. And um, I just thought for a minute, yeah, I think this will be very easy for anybody to just listen to a White House from the outside. And there is a very sensitive receiver people can buy, drive by the car, and listen to all the transmissions. So, so with this one, you don't go very far. You're safe. <laughs> um, difficult to intercept. High power transmissions. And then now they are allowing you such a high transmission, 27 dBm. Okay, which is like one watt. And so on and so forth, and you, you saw the internal. Now in 11N, we had 22 dBm, plus 3 dBi would be 25 dBm ERP. I mean, internal are only 3, 7, 10 dBi internal. Here you can have much more gain. Okay. So 60 gigahertz is good. Why is it bad? First of all, it doesn't go very far, and so that's why you need all this high DDM, and you need the antenna with the high gain, and it doesn't go very far, so you cannot really use it for anything other than, you know, short distance. And then there is something new, which is called deafness. Deafness means that if I'm talking to you, if I, if I am talking to you, but my face is like this, you cannot hear me because I'm in the wrong direction, right? So the direction is very important. The carrier sense is not possible. So you cannot say, well, I'm in the sense that somebody else is transmitting, because they might be transmitting in this direction, and I'm looking in this direction. So you cannot figure it out. RTFC addresses will not work anymore, OK? And multicast is very difficult. If I want to talk to everybody, I got to do 15 times. Okay, and easily blocked if your dog comes and sits in front of you, <laughs> then we only can hear, but you cannot. Okay, so these are all the problems, but in spite of that, it is succeeding, and there are applications for it. Cable replacement, so basically it is good for cable replacement. In the back of the TV, there are lots of cables. And they are trying to replace that with high speed wireless connections. And um, and if you are going to play games which require a lot of power, interactive gaming, high speed file transfer, wireless 
mesh backhaul. So if you if you have this kind of backhaul, you know, even longer distances, you can probably use 60 gigahertz. Okay. All right. And of course, you can do this kind of transmission, very high speed file transfer. You can do everything around the TV. And so on so forth. I will continue on this slide next time.